Welcome, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, liking our videos. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Although those platforms, I'm not there regularly. It's a work in progress. I've been busy working in other areas trying to grow the our business so we can reach more people in our community. Thank you for being here today. My name is Reverend Penelope Horton now. Uh, as some of you know, if you follow some of our uh, social media platforms, I got married in August. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so now I'm Reverend, I'm still Reverend Penelope, just Horton now. Uh, I said I would come here and loved ones and I would talk about astral projections, which is one of my favorite subjects. I love meditation. I love visualization. Uh, I love ritual. I love ritual uh, in my life. I, I, I feel like it enhances my life. So this here is the Llewellyn Practical Guide of Astral Projection, the Out of Body Experience by Denning and Phillips. I think this was a great, really good book. Although I did like some of the terminology that was used in this book, I like a more simple terminology. I do like their science, how to approach and discussing the different levels of consciousness while doing uh, astral projection work. The book, uh, I think I got this from Thrift Books. I think I got it from Thrift Books. Uh, yes, I did. Thrift Books. I'm not sure how much I paid for this book. Uh, it wasn't over 15 bucks. It wasn't over 15 bucks. The book is about 250 something pages. And I'll probably go over the glossary too. Yeah, I probably go over some of the glossary because the glossary was very interesting to me. Some of the terms, like I said, was very interesting to me. So I probably, uh, I'll probably go over some of those terms because I, I didn't notice that the glossary is back here. So we'll probably go over that too. I'll try not to make this too long. Like I said, I like this book, uh, but I didn't like some of the terms that were used in here. I think this book is maybe, I'm trying, was trying to find the uh, table of contents. Okay, here we go. I kept missing that because it wasn't the way it usually is. There's seven chapters in here. Uh, it talks about the astral world. Let's talk about that. You got the art of living. What is astral projections? Is interest and values, attractions of astral travel at earth level and behind the scenes in the astral world. Astral projection can change your life for the better. The art of living. How do you experience consciousness? Plans of the sight. How is different parts interact? How to encourage the interaction? Take care of your lower self. Responsibilities of the rational mind. What the astral body is like. Introduction to the centers of activity, which is basically the chakras. See, some of this language in here, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I was just like, okay, why are you using this language? A meeting places for astral and physical uh, levels. Basically, a, a spiritual place, a place where you meditation, you know, you meditate in. I mean, uh, some of these, this wording, you know, like I said, I didn't agree with some of the wording in here. Uh, but I like that he said lower self, that lower self means doing the shadow work. Everything that I've been telling you, loved ones, to up your spiritual game, to put you on another level spiritually, and to keep you balanced and centered. Not, you know, you won't be perfect. Nobody is perfect. But it'll make you aware uh, of you and your weaknesses and your strengths, which all of us need to know. And where, where we can enhance ourselves at. Uh, two. You and the astral projection, the three bodies, physical, astral, mental. How do we how do we know anything? Dreams, astral projection, the vehicle of astral projection, ot and a boot, whatever that means. Four types of ejection of astral substance. The mind and the brain, how to store knowledge for use in astral travel. Questions and answer. Can astral travels get lost? Suppose they forget the time. 
what health requirements are for astral projection. Some of some of those things he talked about in here, I agree with, and I I agree with it and disagree with because you can use journey work to do healing on yourself. So me and the author kind of don't uh, quite agree on that. I think that you can use journey work, visualization to improve your health. Uh, and do a lot of healing on yourself. So this is where it got kind of tricky for me in this book. What if your unconscious body is molested in the material world? Can astral tra travelers discover official secrets? You know, they talked a little bit about that. Three, this is chapter three. Astral projection is natural. And he goes on to talk about that. And he really breaks down, gives you a summary of each chapter. Uh, before you dive in, he's going to let you know what he's going to be discussing in each chapter. And again, these are seven chapters in this book. Uh, I have some little things marked in this book and, and some little things that I wanted to discuss uh, in this book as well. My take on uh, some of the things, my experience, you know, uh, if you've, if you've uh, subscribed to our channel, you know, we have a you know, some very good meditations that really put you in the mindset of experiencing what I'm visually walking you through. So, and that's what, how your meditation should be. It should feel real. It should feel like you're there. You should have experienced change uh, in, in your body and start. And if you feel it on the inside, it, it will start to change on the outside. So, you know, check out some of our meditations. I think they're very good. We've got some very good feedback from some of our followers. Okay, so I thought this was interesting. This is on page 36. I think this is in the second cha chapter, You and Your Astral Projection. And here he's talking about the different astral projections. You know, I thought that was interesting. He's talking about... Uh, well, let me start chapter two and then I jump in here and talk when he starts talks about the different astral projections. He says, we have already seen the normal human way for consciousness to be aware of anything outside itself. It's through a vehicle of some kind. We have seen that in its usual state of, of state, the consciousness has three vehicles, the physical body, the astral sum, see, and, or or astral body. I like calling it the spirit the spirit body. Um, like I said, some of these terms, they're different. Uh, the nas, uh, uh, the nasome, whatever that is, I can't even pronounce this, or the mental body. We have also seen that in the normal life of human beings, and in this book, we are going to only, we are only concerned with what is normal we are not concerned with anything that is is which is super normal or suited only to demigods or highly developed mystics. Like I said, this book is is more scientific, so some of the terminology in here I didn't agree with. Um, the means by which the conscious mind is aware of what is outside of itself is its astral vehicle, and usually it's the same by the means of its physical vehicle. The astral me, however, is less limited, which is the astral body. See some of this, this terminology. Uh, the astral me is only aware of its own, own level, whether the rational mind knows about it or not. Indeed, the rational mind can be and frequently is only made aware later of something which has already been privately transacted by the astrosome with, with or without collusion of the physical body. That accounts for a good many situations when the astral body insists on expressing an emotion with the rational mind which not permit and the results can be very laughable or embarrassing according to circumstances. With regard to sleeping state, this independent action of the astral level is characterized by the subsequent subsequent recollection of dream, which contains a certain amount of vivid objective subject matter, but no evidence of more than emotional guidance and probably also a mixture of quasi-physical with the per, apparently fantastic of symbolic imagery. 
This dream evidence indicates that the astrosomy can not only act independently of the mental body, but also can have an out-of-body experience independently of it. And so this is what I wanted to talk about. And this is what he is saying. And I'm going to explain this. So, uh, and this was, I tell you, loved ones, get in touch with your psychology and doing the shadow work. I mean, all of this, all this plays together. All this plays together. Uh, it, it really levels you up on your spirituality. But what he's saying here, there is a difference. is when you're consciously doing an astral travel, like one of the meditations I have on, on uh, the channel. When you're consciously doing that, you're creating, you are having that experience, but you're able to change more of the now. This is my understanding of it, you know. But when you are asleep, because I've experienced this, I was 10 years old and I witnessed uh, an assault on my cousin. Um, and I was outside of my body and I could not get myself up. And it took me a minute to get myself back in my body. My spirit body had left my body. I don't know how. Uh, I've had many uh, spiritualists uh, tell me. Uh, I've had two to tell me. I was ascending and descending in my sleep. I go places. I've had experiences where I have bought things out of my sleep. Where my spirit has went somewhere else and bought some things back uh, to me. You know, I wake up and I got something I bought out of a dream. So that, that has happened to me too. So you're, what I'm telling you, it is real. When we're having these meditation experiences, visualizations, and you're visualizing yourself healing, and you're visualizing yourself speaking to the ancestors, and you're visualizing yourself speaking to these spirit guides, this is something real, whether you want to believe it or not. Now, the ones that's more independent, which I believe is the ones that out of body experience when we're having when our, we're not conscious of it. When we're not conscious of it, that astral body, if need be, uh, it will it will step out. It happens. It happens. You know, these dreams that, you know, we're going there, these, ast these are astral, uh, this is the astral world. They're having the astral experiences. So, uh, yeah, I thought I would throw that in there. What goes out from the physical body is not as long as earth, earthly life lasts as the whole astro to me. The whole astral body. If the whole astral body is ejected, that is death, as in some cases of sudden extreme shock or the bomb blast in which the body shows no sign of whatever physical cause of death. But such an accident could not occur to a healthy person from any, any cause less that type of shock. The entire astral body does not end out of body experience detach itself from the physical body. The gross astral at last remains to keep the heart beating, the nervous system and the brain ticking over. Those essential functions may sometimes be slowed down to an extent sufficient to frighten an uninformed observer who sees the unconscious body, but they are continuously uh, adequately functioning. So he was talking about, and he goes on to talk about this woman who was asleep, but she seems to be, you know, her astral body was not near her because she almost looked dead. You know, she that's just how uh, deep she slept. And he was talking about how those are signs that our astral body is, is having another experience and not there, we're not there consciously, okay? Okay. Uh, I thought that was that that was a uh, that was something to mention. Uh, and, you know, I can't emphasize enough doing the meditation work, doing the, the 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 shadow work. You know, doing that deep diving work to really take advantage of all these physical gifts and talents that we do have to tap into. You guys, okay? So uh, this is page thirty six. I think this is chapter two. We're still in chapter two. Um, let where I want to start. I'm going to start in the third paragraph here. 
It said, what goes forth from the physical body is projection, deliberately or otherwise alone, or with the conscious mind is some of the substance of the astral body, more or less, but some and only some while life lasts. Astral substance then can be ejected from a person astrosomy in four possible ways. So he goes on to telling you to how your astral body. See, this is so scientific. And like I tell you, uh, if you if you're scientific and you want a scientific explanation on uh, on uh, out of body experience or astral projection, this is a great book for you. But I, I am going to recommend another book if you're not that type of person and you're just like, this is just too, you know, it just, I don't know. If it's just not a book for you, uh, then I could, I'll recommend another book here at the end of this video. I would recommend that book as well. Uh, but he talks about uh, astral substance then, uh, okay, he's, I read that. He talks about, hey, involuntary, involuntarily. And without the rational consciousness, this can be various consequences. The material may return or may partially return, bringing vivid but bewildering, inconsequent dreams, frequently a feeling of being more tired or awaking than on going, on going to bed. A rather coherent example is given in F appendix of this book. Or the material can produce strange poltergeist types wrappings in the bedroom or it can simply be lost and cause a mysterious exhaustion causes a cure of astral bleeding will be completely explained in chapter three so you know uh i, I want to say this is more of an attachment because that's what this sounds like to me uh mm. That sounds more like an uh without rational consciousness this is this this sounds like you know, because when he says poltergeist activity, there's somebody who's always lethargic. Uh, and again, let's go to astral bleeding. He says that involuntary loss of astral substance, usually from the solar plexus region. Mm. And see, they don't go, you know, causes and cures of astral bleeding will be completely explained in chapter three. So if you read chapter three, you're going to get more details on that. This makes me want to go to go chapter three because I, I can't remember what I read in chapter three. I really can't. Okay, involuntary and with the rational consciousness. This is B, involuntary. A book of case histories could easily be filled with examples of, of this. Some individuals have almost a habit of waking into full consciousness, but into the already unconscious exteriorized astral vehicle instead of into that which remains in the physical body most examples one hears however are experienced during sickness such as fever after sudden impacts such as a fall from a horse or while undergoing total anesthesia the person reports having complete rational and normal generally has only been made aware of the situation by recognizing his or her physical body an example is given in in the appendix so again, he said he get, they're giving an uh, example of this in the appendix. I think this is too like when you undergo surgery and you're still there, uh, you still know everything that's going on, uh, even though you're under anesthesia, you can still tell what's going on. Okay, uh, the involuntary A sounds more like uh, there is some mental stuff going on with you. Or there's some attachments going on with you. There's some emotional uh, something going on there uh, with involuntarily. A. Okay, then we have C, voluntarily and without the rational consciousness. This is a special magical technique in which material is sent out deliberately for the purpose of assimilating impressions. Full details of two distinct forms uses the of this procedure will be given in four and five again this is more like remote viewing uh i would say and creating as well doing journey work as, as well uh d voluntarily with the rational consciousness this is the main activity which this book is uh, is to teach you voluntarily with rational consciousness and this is what this book is to teach you that's what he says uh 
Yeah, I wanted to read something else in this book. And uh, I think I'm going to close out. I want to keep you guys long. Like I said, this is a really good book. I think it is from a scientific point of view. Because uh, I could break some of it down. I kind of knew what he meant. And I only knew what he meant by because I had some of these experiences. And he's coming up with scientific terms to explain some of my experiences. So I got some of it. But if you're not that type of person, then you probably don't want to get this book. <laughs> I tell you, it's not an easy read because you, you're having to break down these, these terms and stuff. Okay. Um, everything else in this book is for the purpose of letting you know more clearly what you will be doing or why various procedures are helpful for how you can obtain maximum benefit from your new knowledge. The explanation continues. The rational consciousness when this is in the body in the ordinary everyday state acts through the astro astrobe to draw upon the sensory brain consciousness and, and so builds up its awareness of the physical world. Like I told you, all of this we are creating. And they just told you this in a very physical term. I mean, a very scientific term. This person just told you this. So behind the schemes of everything, spirit is creating all of this. The brain is not the intelligence, but it is very complex computer and rational mind is the great extent dependent upon it for reliable working data, at least in some fields of activity. Activity. That is why a person who has not long been practicing astral projection may have the impression that less than his whole rational mind is functioning while out of the body. He will be capable of experiencing his travels distinctly and definitively appreciating adventure and excitement and beauty, forming impressions and judgments of the human and non-human entities that he may encounter. He may realize that some of his experiences have spiritual significance, which he will interpret naturally in accordance with the extent and the type of his own inner development. Yet with all this, he may not be able until he gets back to his body to remember some technical data he thinks be, uh, might be useful or to coordinate his astral experience with an earthly experience of the same sort that he knows he once had. This, however, does not indicate a limitation in the mind, mind's own capability while in a state of projection. It is simply a temporary effect of his separation from the brain's computer bank. Many people who begin astral projection may never be troubled with this problem, but those who are will find their trouble passes away altogether when the projected state becomes, with practice, part of the normal life experience. So the more you do projection, the more real it becomes to you, okay? You'll doubt it at first, but as these things start to happen, these synchronicities start to happen, uh, as you start having these experiences, you'll see that uh, it is real for you. Okay, really good stuff. Uh, I think it's, this is a, good, a great book for you guys who want a scientific um, explanation, how to, and how everything works. This is a great book for this. And it's called The Llewellyn Practical Guide to Astral Projection, The Out-of-Body Experience by Dennings and Phillips. Um, I thought, you know, I, let me go over it because I said I was going to go over the uh, the glossary. I thought the, uh, the glossary is very interesting to me. Um, the astral bleeding, we talked about that, uh, which is talk, called, uh, talks about the, the loss of astral substance, usually from the solar plexus region. And I also think that the more they talked about that, that sounds like soul loss as well. It sounds like a bit of soul, soul loss and maybe a disassociation. Uh, astral vehicle, body formed of astral substance through which the consciousness can function separately from the physical body. Centers of activity, energy centers, centers of the astral body corresponding with the neural glandular centers in the physical body. Again, we're talking about chakras as well. You're going to go over that in this book. Circulation of lights, essential, lights, essential closing actions of Formula One when energy is recirculated through the whole organism. Dream diary, special record of dreams kept for the purpose of analysis, analysis 
to examine examine uh, the responses of the site. He talks about the, at the what's the the ones I thought that was interesting to me because I uh, I just did a book review on Kabbalah, uh, the key to your inner power, uh, and he talks about nefesh, the term of emotional and instinctual levels collectively of the psyche, non rational soul. Uh, that that's a Kabbalist term, neshama, uh, which means the higher self. So he used he uses uh, some of these terms in this book as well. I thought that was interesting. The one that I didn't really like was Celio si, si, uh, si, 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 Crowlin, um, a phantasmal replica here, a replica of the operator formed of the exteriorized astral substance. I just, I didn't like that, you know, that term there, I didn't, which we, we were talking about the astral body, okay, the, the spirit body, and you'll hear me call it spirit body, but yeah, there's some interesting stuff in this glossary, I do recommend the book if you want a scientific stem uh, uh, point of this, uh, it's a great spiritual science knowledge to have in your library, um, but my favorite take on this for you that are spiritual and you're in the journey work, um, a more practical, you know, just want to keep it simple. You can do without the scientific terms. The initiate book of path working. Excellent book. I love it. I think this is my overall favorite book. I created some meditations from this book as well. So, man, I like this book. Although this this is a really good book, which was answered a lot of my experiences, you know, uh, looking at it from, I like to, you know, look at it from different perspectives. This is a really good book, too. But this is my favorite, all-time favorite, because I love the visualization. I love the, I love the fact that I can play with visualization and the, the symbology. It makes it more personified when I can create it myself and it means something for me. Okay. So, uh, and well, I'll come back here and we're going to get into astral projection a little bit more because I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in this ne next book that I'm reading. And we're going to talk about a little bit more about astrology and psychology and how that all comes together. We're going to talk about that on this channel. So you guys just stay with me. We're going to be learning some of this stuff. I'm going to be bringing you some good books to read to help you learn. Thank you for being here with me today. Light and love. Namaste, loved ones. May the ancestors be with you. Ashe.